All right, Gurjeet. I don't know what time it is there, your time, but uh, it's it's early morning here for me. It's not so early anymore. It's 9 a.m. But uh, I, I am in Asia, so I'm I'm working, building my development project, my resort for the last two years here since oh. after COVID. It's going well. Okay. It's almost finished. So I'll invite you when once it's finished, uh, as well as other yeah. brokers, other graduates of the Commercial Financing Experts Academy to attend. Oh, right? Okay. It's a, it's uh, a hey. Big it's a it's a nice paid project right I'll, I'll i'll give you the link to instagram with all the updates but uh the reason why i built it is because i wanted to have a place where brokers can come learn take okay. a vacation enjoy okay. life get recharged right enjoy life to get recharged and go back and okay. you're feeling pumped you feel excited with the new energy and new insights and you can go be a great hunter again you know you got the drive you got the passion you got the energy yeah. Perfect. Right. Go back to work. Right. Right. Whereas most people work, you know, go to, to go to what Mexico, Hawaii, and then they burnt out. They come home and say, ah, "I got to work." Yeah. That's that's not ideal, man. Like especially when you want long term longevity, you want to survive in the business, and not not just survive, but you want to thrive, right? Just like you, Gurji, you, you're getting uh to to a point in your career, your third year, I think you said you were here doing the third yeah. year. Yes, it's like second year. Second year, okay. Well, now now you get to the point where, hey, some some of your some of your people in your community start to recognize you. Now they're coming with much more difficult uh, situations that you just came across, right? It's like, okay, now what the hell do I do? I mean, the broker channel can't do this. I know that as a fact, right? Yeah. So I I want to help my clients. I want to help my investors, and we and we always tell our, our clients, right? Hey, I am your go to financing expert. Okay. Right. So, so it's time to step up, time to level up, right? Time to yeah. increase your value so that you don't get left behind. Because I know, yeah. as a fact, the longer you stay in this business, if you don't grow, your investors will outgrow you. Definitely. That means the money, gone, right? <laughs> right now, you're leaving money on the table, right? These tables, right? If, if, imagine all the investors here say, hey, I want to buy a sixplex, eightplex apartment building. And Gurjit's going, <laughs> help. <laughs> yeah. All right, but hey, it's, it's great that you reach out to me and uh, I'm here to help. Um, So you have a deal right now we, we can discuss about and we can share other brokers so that I can learn, right? Yes. Uh, but before we get into this, mm -hmm. I want to preface that commercial financing is very different. It's, it's like day and night compared to residential mortgages, right? Yeah. So the first thing you need to do is Wrap your head around that. Whatever you learned from, you know, so whether it's Saudi UBC from BC or one of the one of the um, college or that you learned to get your license in Ontario, it's it's the same. Right? They don't teach you commercial finance. They don't teach you outside of, you know, a duplex or strata, you know, a single strata unit. How to finance that? And most of our residential broker channel lenders don't offer that. Like for us, anyway. They do offer on the retail branch level, like TD, yeah. Scotia, they all do that, right? So when you when you come across a deal, my thought process is this. You have to put your thought process to match your your effort, to match the time that you have. Because there's only one Gurji, correct? Yeah. There's not like, like slew, there's not a big team of you, right? Yeah. Um, and, and you don't have an underwriting desk that can handle these things anyway, right? Unless you send it to head office, when then they'll give you like twenty five bips or forty bips, right? Which like, hey man, I need to eat too. <laughs> yes. Right? So here's the thing, my my thought process that I teach in in my workshop to my graduates and how the process works is like the one of the biggest thing is 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 mindset. You have to you have to you have to wrap yourself around that. Hey, I need to show my value, and that I can charge my fee, whether it's be. 1%, 2%, or 3%, doesn't matter. Well, whatever the amount, it has to make sense, right? So yes. the first, first thing they do is, my client will need to pay me, right? And I need to show my value. Like, what, do I, what, what I'm offering for, say, for example, 2%. So on, on, on a million dollar mortgage, it's like $20,000, right? That, that's nice, right? Yes. But your investors can say, I'm... I have to pay you now. Usually the bank pays you. That's what you guys keep preaching, right? So now I have to pay you. What's going on, right? To to get them around that, you need to figure a way to show them, hey, why I why I have to pay Gurjeet, 
Mm -hmm. right? I'm the investor. Right? Yes. So that's what you have to figure out first. Okay. Why am I paying you? So when you're in a conversation, you need to talk. You don't have to say, this is why you're paying me. No, don't, don't, you don't need to say that. You have to say, this is what I'm going to do for you. This is what you will get out of me. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Right? Sell, not tell. Yes. Telling them is like, you pay me because of this. No, sell mm -hmm. it. Right, you need to sell it. That's all they, they always say in, in sales. Uh, and, and being a great mortgage broker, the first thing you need to do is, is increase your sales skill. Your negotiation skills is, it will help for commercial financing as well. But sales skill is, is quite mandatory. Right, read sales book. Uh, you know, there's a lot of sales book out there for you. Right, uh, Brian Tracy, uh, Tom Hopkins. Look, look up those authors. They got they got tons of books to help you with that. Right. And um, there's a great one. I can't remember the author's name, but I call uh, Spin Selling is one I, I recommend to my mortgage brokers that take the workshop. Say, you want further lessons in, in, in sales skills? Read this book called Spin Selling. Okay. Right. So that's one. So after yet, you figure out, out why they need to pay you and you, you're able to give them the idea. The next thing you need to do is ask yourself this question is this deal worth my time and my partner's mm -hmm. time so the account manager the lender that you're getting involved and all the people that you need to bring into you need a lot like some of these things you need like an accountant uh, you know a ca preferably uh, a lawyer that can handle mm -hmm. commercial financing and small business lending rather than just residential mortgages right Okay. Most of them can, but if 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 they've never done done it before, it doesn't help you. Okay, because if you're okay. stuck in something that that lawyer is not familiar with, they won't be able to help you. Right. So find someone who's okay. done commercial deals, right? Specifically. Um, second of all is 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 this worth my time and effort? Okay. So some some people have hey have come come to me and say hey. So I, I, I want to buy a semi-transport truck. It's going to be $200,000 mortgage. I'm going <laughs> inside my head. I'm going, oh, no. <laughs> like, can I do that? Yes. It's not that hard, right? But it's like, mm. is it worth my time? No. Uh, mm. Idea, I work on five, $10 million deals. That's that's my ideal. A lot of my graduates, I said, your ideal sweet spot is two to, two to five million. Because okay. guys like me and somebody else, who's done a lot of commercial deals, they, mm -hmm. they don't really want to do a million dollar deal. They don't want to do a sub $1 million, right? Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind. So is it worth Gurjeet's time? Depends. If you're charging 1% on a 500K deal, that's like, I might as well go to act do my residential mortgages. Right? <laughs> yeah. That's, right? that's so it's true. like, yeah. More work and same pay or less. Yeah. That doesn't make yeah. sense. Right? Just, so, yeah. So, Check, is it worth my time? Because at the end of the day, you're going to put a lot more effort than a residential deal. Just understand that. Not mm -hmm. about time frame, but it's like understanding deals, how to make the deal work, how to structure it. And I teach all this in a workshop because it's it's not just easy just to hammer away at it and and throw this deal at every lender and see if it's, it's it sticks on a wall. If it sticks, woohoo, I'll celebrate, right? But commercial financing doesn't work that way. Like I was trying to tell you on, on, on the email and, and WhatsApp conversation that, you need to figure how this works. Like yes. when you have a commercial deal, it's not strictly TDS, GDS, all right? Yes, yes, it's debt coverage ratio. It's a little bit different, but that is one part of it. The other part that the lenders will ask, see, the lenders are always going to ask questions, similar to private lending, actually, but even worse, right? They're almost like interrogating you. It's like, okay, tell me, tell me about the client's net worth. Uh, I'm going, well, we don't ask that on the residential side. Like, who cares if he owns companies? Who cares if he owns businesses, right? No, we do on the commercial side. Does he own a business? Is an operating business? Does he own other investment property? Does he own other commercial properties? Like, if this deal is, is just borderline, we need more ammunition to pad it to make it work, right? To make it to make the guy look stronger. If he doesn't have a lot of network, does he have experience, industry experience? Like, like one of my investors, he, he's a hotelier. He's a great, he's got 25, 30 years worth of hotel experience. He buys cool. and fix and flips hotels. Okay. You, you don't even know that's a thing, is it? Right? I mean, he, that's what he does. He buys hotels that are underperforming. He manages it. 
he renovates yeah. it, he figures what's working, what's not working, and he fixes it, and he and, and he then, makes it a flag, corporate flag, meaning bring bring in a franchise to support it, right? Okay. And then he's in the refinance or just resells it for a okay. premium, right? So there's a lot of this thing happening. Same thing with the gas station. One of my investors does a similar thing with gas station, right? Usually buys a mom and pop and then renovates it, makes it branded up and then shiny and resells it within two, three years. That's Whoa. force appreciation, right? Um, so those are the different, the nuances that are different. It's like, you need to figure out, okay, what's wrong with this deal? Because every commercial deal that I come across, whether it's great deal, I said, what's wrong with this deal? Okay. It could be that he lacks experience, right? It could be that he doesn't have a strong net worth. This yes. is this is the down payment from Hong Kong that he brought it with him. That's it, like all, all or nothing, <laughs> right? And so if he has experience, that's great. But is it local experience or international experience? If it's international, like one of my one of my one of my awesome client, right? Another brown brother buys a gas station. I'm going. Serena, you own a 7-Eleven. Like, just buy another 7-Eleven <laughs> or Max or whatever, right? Um, and grocery store. And I'll expand it. I'll, I'll be able to finance that. Very simple. But you're buying a gas station. Yeah, so, but it has a convenience store. I said, yeah, who, who gives you this idea? Like, it's, you know, the risk, the environmental, the, the, the safety risk. There's a lot of these things that are in, in additional to running a 7-Eleven, right? It's very different. Right? You, you, you need, like, security, a lot more security for, for a gas station these days. Right? Yeah. And a lot of uh, uh, different types of people, right? And you, you, if, if they're working night shift by themselves, and all, 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 there's another layer of like, of of liabilities involved having a gas station on top of the environmental. And I said, I can get, I can try, but I think it's going to be pushed back. And I, I know, like I know, the lender's going to say, "What's your experience?" And I'm saying, "Well, I ran a Seven Eleven. So that's not enough, right?" It's great, but then yeah, they say yeah, well I can justify it. there's a there's a there's a grocery store inside the you know inside this gas station, but say, that's that's a small part of it, right? Um, so at the end of the day, is I figure that he has a support system in place that is not on the deal. He has an uncle that okay. that is a general manager, every manager of many of the petroleum uh locations okay. in India. Right, okay. so I said, you know, that's awesome. I need your uncle's information. I need to interview him. I need to talk to him so I can structure this deal to make it look stronger than it currently is. Because right yeah. now it's like, hi, my name is Gurjeet. I own a Seven Eleven. I want to buy a gas station. <laughs> T is yeah. say, yeah, no thanks. <laughs> right? <laughs> Scotia say, no, no. RBC is say, no, no, no. CABC is say, no, no, no. We know we're not going to. We're not taking this risk. That's yeah. how they perceive it, right? So. Underwriting risk views commercial deals very differently. But you say, but it's a cash flow gas station. I'm taking it over and keeping the manager. Like it's it's working great. Why won't you finance it? It's cash flowing. Well, there's a risk that we're taking on that is going to succeed or fail. Based mm -hmm. on what? Guess what that is? Probably the, the sales. Or no, it, the sales is based on what? Financial, the, the owner, owner, yeah, owner. No, the owner's experience. Oh, okay, right. It's great that the going's good. It keeps going, but when they hit the bump, what happens? Yeah, does he have the experience? How how is he gonna manage this? Mm -hmm. Like for yeah. example, somebody hit, somebody just gets the gas and and runs, takes off okay. on it. Yeah, right? and I mean, they might be stupid enough. They they rip off the whole entire holes, and it's creating you know creating like a hazardous area with gas station, and the gas is spilled all over, you know. And 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 the guy's working on that that night shift. He's freaking out, you know. He's like, so how do you handle that? One is human resources. The guy just quit. The guy can't handle the stress. Yes. All right. And, and then the other one is how do you how do you how do you get this cleaned up mess? Because the city is not gonna like this, yes. right? That's an environment impact of some crisis mode, right? Yeah. So that's what a lender sees. The lender sees worst case scenarios of, of every situation. Say, like how can you overcome their thinking that if you're faced with a crisis, how can you manage this if you have no experience? Okay. 
right? What's the worst case of 7-Eleven? Somebody runs out with a can of pop. Mm -hmm. Who cares? It's small. It doesn't show. Somebody ripped off a gas station hose and it sprayed all of gas all over. Okay. <laughs> how, like, now what? <laughs> yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So there's like, okay, who do they have to call now? No, it's not Ghostbusters. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was like, what do I need to do? Do I need a hazmat team? Do I need to call the city? Do we need to call the insurance company? Well, like, what right? do you need? So that's how a lender looks at it. The lenders always look at the worst case scenario because they're in the business of, of, of rotating that money, right? Lending the money, get the terms done, get the payoff, relend the money again, right? Okay. Because this is this is not money from CMXC. This is money not money that come from the government. This is a balance sheet lending, right? Yes. Right. This is the money that deposits people. People like your family buying GIC, right? They're using that money to finance that gas station. Right? Okay. Yeah. So on your scenario, now here's the thing. So now you understand the overall, the gist of it. I, I teach like in depth how to overcome certain, all, all those bumps along the way. Right? In my workshop, I teach all that. Um, my online videos, there's 140 videos, but it won't go into much detail. It will go surface level, but I'll give you an, enough to enough to figure things out, right? If you're smart, you can figure the other stuff out. If not, you just enroll in the workshop when you're ready, Gurjeet, and uh, I'll be there. I'll go through everything with you. All the worst case scenario, how to fix problems, every individual problem that comes your way, even the unexpected ones, right? Yeah. Uh, preventative maintenance is what I call it well, to to figure out how to get these deals approved, right? Every deal has hair. You every time they come to a mortgage broker, it's definitely has hair, and they they may not tell you what it is, all right? And if yeah. you don't ask the right question, you don't know what the you don't know what the problem is. Because yes. if they come to you, it's like, wow, this deal looks great. And then your mind goes, why the heck did he not go straight to the bank? Why did Mr. Singh not go to the bank? Like, yes. this deal just, this looks great. Like, it doesn't make sense, mm -hmm. right? If he's, if he's working with CIBC in the past, why didn't he go there, right? Yeah. So a lot of these things that, 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 that I that I've gained over the past 25, 30 years, oh, probably more now, but um, I share all this inside stuff, right? So on your, on your circumstance that you have, you have... A situation where they're buying these townhouses yeah. and using it similar to a short-term rental, meaning but it's meant towards assisted living, correct? Yeah. Right? It's so they're basically yeah. converting set. So they're they are retired people, uh, yeah. but they're living independent living, in other words, right? Uh, kind of like uh, so it will be so the the people who who needs uh, like care home uh, services. Yep. And they they're yep. like they are uh, kind of can need any their own bad situation they need more help uh something like that yeah yeah I mean like similar to assisted living yes where the doctors and that. nurses are available uh, yeah people similar. come in to care of them wash them and yeah so assisted yes. living similar yeah. um the assisted living that I usually help out is in in like an apartment like a low rise they're like yeah. 20 30 units or even less sometimes but it's sometimes even more right yeah. and if they have a corporate business that operates there they would have on-site staff nurses there and all that stuff like pediatrician yeah. not pediatrician um uh, nutritionist right yeah. <laughs> pediatrician for kids <laughs> so they have nutritionists on there for for like Hey, senior folks have a different type of food requirements. So it's yes. just as like kids do, right? Uh, they're not to like the adults where they eat everything anymore. No? You, they don't eat steak anymore, but they, they do want to taste steak, right? Yeah. So there's um for them to to be able to have sustenance that fits their age group and for the gut, right? They they can uh, digest a lot of the heavy food that we take for granted now, right? Yes. Uh, uh, samosa may be great for me and you, but <laughs> for the elderly, uh, there's a certain stage that they can't eat all that stuff too much anymore, right? Um, so there's on-site nutrition, on-site physio, on-site nurse, on-site massage. That a lot of those things that they won't have with these townhouses, I'm guessing, because they're like more individual single house, right? Yes. Unless they can have, um, unless they can have a unit there that encompasses the local the staff on-site staff 
It could be um, an entertainment area. It could be a clubhouse that they convert, maybe, right? That, that's the kind of thing that they do. I don't know. So like go back to the first series of questions I asked you about is like experience, net worth and all that stuff, track record, what's their hist history. Yeah. And all these things you write into and what, what we call an executive summary. An executive summary outlays everything, right? Similar what to you what you do when you send to a private lender. You you give all the information about the client, the history, yeah. the experience, and then the challenges that they're currently facing and mm -hmm. how they overcome that. Right. So that's what that's part and parcel of executive summary. Right. Mm -hmm. Once you create that, then you can submit that to, to most retail lenders, right? Yeah. And even to exceed exceed. And that's why I, I mentioned to you is like it really depends on every client, every deal. Because if it's the deal that I bring, if this is the same multi-unit townhouse that they bought in the entire townhouse complex, and my investor, which handles a lot of these assisted living business, he would convert the clubhouse. He would have on-site staff there, uh, mm -hmm. on-call doctor and all that stuff, right? This deal would be easy. I can get it CMC approved. Again. But because I don't know the answer to this question that I asked you, and you may may not even know that answer either because you don't know the questions, right? Yeah. Um. So so, part of being commercial financing is know the question that you need to ask the clients, okay. right? Know know the question to ask. Okay. Does he realize there's a problem here? <laughs> right? Does he does he he doesn't see what he doesn't know, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Being somebody experienced in the industry like myself, and I mentor over 170 students now, right? Yeah. A lot of the questions I ask is like, wow, that... I never thought about that. Yeah, because it's like, it's not something you normally think every day. Yes. And every industry is the same. Like, you know, it's like, I want to ask about the the hit and run kind of question from a gas station when it comes to a care home. This yes. doesn't apply. <laughs> I yes. think those guys can't run fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> they gotta pay before they leave <laughs> all right yeah. um or, or else the insurance company will have to pay right yeah so there are different questions you need to ask right what are their client base how are they going to do marketing what what is their situation for leads generation like mm -hmm. is this a for sure thing or is it a casino bet right? okay. are these clients guaranteed with these referral system how do they know it's guaranteed? Okay. Right? Like for one of my, I have helped different people in different trades. It's, it's mind boggling. Like um, I've been helped people who, who help mom mothers give birth at home. There's okay. the real business for that. Can you believe that? I, I did. I, you know, there was three nurses that decided yeah. to say well, to hell with the doctors, to hell with the hospitals. We can do our own business when we yeah. can help them mothers give nat natural birth at home okay i help them i help them in finance general. a business like finance the purchase of of, of the property even convert the residential property into like a like a uh a, what do we call it? a nursing business that takes okay. care of those people it's amazing i, I never knew that existed it's in canada right? yes it's in canada yeah <laughs> Yeah, so it's very, it's very cool, and they get paid by MSP. I didn't even know that, oh. right? They get paid by the provincial uh, medical services plan. Mm -hmm. Wow! So it's a guaranteed income source, and the referral system, doctors, nurses, and other uh, other hospitals refer them business, right? They have a, such a long history, and they have a lot of leads generated. Mm -hmm. Their first time doing this on their own, right? Mm -hmm. Their own banks wouldn't even. Give them the time of day because they thought that was like the craziest idea ever. <laughs> right. Yeah. So once you know the story, once you get your wrapping head around it, once you answer all the mitigating risk questions, mm -hmm. the chance of having that approval went from crazy to brilliant idea. <laughs> okay. All right. We have projections from the accountants. We have everything in order that the lenders would, would, would want to see. The underwriters only care for the only uh, see the underwriters care for only one thing. Okay. Am I going to lose my job by funding this for Gurjeet? <laughs> okay. Right? Yes. So, as a commercial fund,
financing as a mortgage broker, our job is to help them keep their job. Okay. That's what Make my sense. job is. Right. Makes sense. Yeah. It, it, it's it's a glorified it's a glorified position, but my job is to to do the underwriting that the underwriter needs before they even see the deal. Right? Yeah. Ask the stupid questions that I need to ask because the client won't divulge that information unless I ask that stupid question. Yeah. All right. So it might seem dumb and, 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 and in the back of your mind or, or your gut is telling you, ask. All right. Pretend okay. it's your father's money, your great grandfather's money, the family's money that lent to you to invest in these loans. Right. Yeah. So that's how I treat a lot of my lenders. I, uh, I treat them so that when the next time I come around knocking on the door, hey, Gurjeet, Mr. Uh, CIBC, I, I have another deal. Can you take a look at it and see if you can see if you get it approved? Mm -hmm. If the last deal is good, chances are you probably take my deal, right, Gurjeet? Yes, definitely. Right. But if the last deal is like so flaky, a waste <laughs> of my time, the minute yeah. that Sue calls Gurjeet, is going to put it on hold or puts it onto the <laughs> voicemail. <laughs> <laughs> they have call ID. Understand it. To this day, they still have call ID at the branch, at, at, okay. at the commercial office, right? My guys know, hey, Sua, picks up the phone. Hey, Sua. I said, hey, I didn't say hello yet. Yeah, I see your number. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Even their phones, you know, if they have the cell phone too, they would definitely have call ID. So just realize, just as a realtor does to you in a residential deal, mm -hmm. The last deal, all right, that you did, if it's a good deal, so you're as good as your last deal. So make sure every yeah. deal is good. Every, yeah. yeah. If it's not good, if it's not good, what is why is it not good? And if yes. you tell the, the commercial account manager up front, you say, Hey, you know, this is your G, this deal on the surface, it looks good, but I have one concern that the client really doesn't doesn't give me sufficient answer. And I okay. think I should tell you before we waste both of our time. But yeah. if you can, if you've seen this situation before in the past and, and if it's if we're able to overcome it, maybe share that with me, right? Okay. Mr. CIBC or Mr. RBC, and uh, I'll talk to the client. And if we can have that in place, then we can probably get this approved. Okay. All right. Makes Sometimes sense. they'll help you, right? Yeah. But at least be up, be transparent with them. Be transparent yeah. with the commercial guys. They'll help you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Just like me, like, I want to help out. I want to give back to the industry. It, it, mm -hmm. It's such a it's such a great industry to be in, man. We literally print money. You know, <laughs> we do. Okay. Like no other industry can do this. Right? I don't have overhead. Neither do you. Oh, yes. the car and the gas, hey, right? And 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 the coffee. <laughs> but <laughs> this is an awesome industry being. Don't screw it up. Don't mess it up. Right. Okay. Now, if you have specific questions, great. But hand, get those answers first before I can help you further. Yeah, I have some okay. uh, some answers for it. So probably the okay. client, uh, she she's already doing this home care services, yep. and it's yep. been like five years. She's operating through her operating company, okay. and uh, and she has uh, like a lot of uh, employees that works for her. Yeah. Are they contract and, or the employees? Uh, so they're contract. Okay. So they're not employees. Yeah. No, they, they just okay. do contracts. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, they subcontracts. Sub yeah. And then, uh, yeah. so, so currently they are providing their uh, care services by reaching out to the, to the public's home, like uh, probably the home of the client. They go over there, they provide the services over there. So the main main oh, aim okay. of the main main of, of my client is that they want to buy this property and then mm -hmm. accommodate the, the client over there. So, okay. so with that, they're gonna charge the client more for the accommodation fee, which, which they are not yeah, charging yeah. right now. And and yeah, upon yeah. that, so I asked them like how uh, how they're gonna make more money with this property. So they told me that uh, so this lady she used to work for AHS, like Alberta Health Services. Ah, and, okay. And, good. And she has good link. They, over know, there. they know the numbers. They, yeah, they, they know, know the numbers. numbers. And, and they, and they yeah. know a lot of people in, from inside. 
she she told me that yes. once she have the building uh yeah. she can get a contract from alberta health services and yeah. they gave her and and once she get that contract from them they will going to provide yeah. him minimum of 5 to 10 clients every time over there at her facilities in switzerland lake nice and and she going to get yeah. around like 20 20000 to 20 20000 uh, to 25000 per client a month from ehs so yeah yeah so, good good so currently her uh 2022 uh return says she, she did a gross of 500000 yeah but uh, what, what's her net uh uh so like after all the subcontracting and so everything yeah uh, i think it's it's not that good right now she's just making around uh, 100 to 150 yeah after yeah. all the expenses okay. and everything yeah yeah is is so is is she renting any of the facilities at all not for her right. business not right now so she she she's using her home and she's not renting it no, not her home. not not her home she's she's going to uh, the people home and then serving over there yeah but how so how is she operating the business just just like how so, how's the business registered is that an office is it at a home or just like a business for self uh i think it's it's uh, it's her home where she registered her business so just like out of the garage kind of thing yeah <laughs> okay so so this would be her real real case business case right now that's what she's trying okay. to do right okay um and 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 the loan amount that you requesting do you know what the total loan amount is going to be so probably um so she is uh, like she is communicating with the seller and uh, right yeah. now the seller said like they're going to sell it for 570 and okay. uh, probably i told her that she have to do 25% down for a commercial yeah but uh, yeah definitely yeah. so yeah. uh if you do 25% so probably she is looking around i guess somewhere 4 400 450 for a loan is 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 it that cheap a slave lake <laughs> that's actually where do you really live kurji where do you live where do you live <laughs> edmonton <laughs> you understand you understand where i'm coming from it's like <laughs> what the heck is and, and it also, a cabin and, and also she is asking like she she needs around like 300k for the renovation once you get it that's also yes. a thing so now that's that's another level okay. yes we we call it mezzanine financing or construction financing on top right yeah so there's a, another level of financing that's required that's yes. basically like a stated like a stated income deal now right it's, yes. it's come from 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 simple somewhat simple now to become a stated mm-hmm. income deal of higher complexity mm-hmm. yes <laughs> Right. there's a lot of moving parts like she would require like yes. she would definitely show she would need a business plan first like okay. we have okay. business plan templates that I that I give to my uh, graduates to okay. use right but okay. they need a somebody who knows how to create a business plan in that case okay. how how to how to do it it's all in her head right now probably right okay. uh, yes. because she's been around this and she think that that's how it works no yes. you need to put it on paper right because it's okay. a brand new business yeah you're not operating in your house anymore you're at the next yeah. level right so yeah. to get that kind of mo- to get that money it's not that hard you can do it. there's two ways to get the money do it the do it the right way or do it her way <laughs> <laughs> yes right her way would be much harder and and yeah. limit her growth if yes. she did it the right way we can help with the construction financing we can help with the additional you know like really additional loan that she would need to operate the business forget about construction afterwards mm-hmm. she would need some kind of like business line of credit or credit mm-hmm. card for a lot of the purchases like up front right yes because she would need it a lot of equipment yeah. equipment needs to be financed because mm-hmm. i am yeah. certainly there's a lot so, of those equipments for yeah, the elderly the, folks who can't like mobility wise right yeah, so that's that. a, that's also a thing so she told me that for the equipment uh probably yeah. the equipment that she need for her patient uh she gonna get yeah. it from ehs for free that's it <laughs> <laughs> wow good 
relationships. She definitely has a good relationship, so she she can leverage that. That's great. Yeah. So that yeah. will help. That will help. That will help with us with giving assurance that there's certainty about getting leads, right? Which yeah. is good. Customers first, right? Always customers first. So if she can have that, that's great, and get more details about all of it. How long? Mm -hmm. Who's involved? Yeah, I I need some names like. Who are the leads okay. you're getting from? You can't just say, oh, it, it's confidential. Oh, this okay. Is lenders money. This is my dad's, my grandfather's <laughs> money you're getting. You know, you got to give me that. You give me some bone because I can't just yes. use this. Yeah. I can't I tell my grandfather, you, I'm letting out this, oh, yeah, it's a secret. I can't give you that information. It's like, come on. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to put it to the public. I'm not going to put it on post it online. I need yeah. to know this information. I know. Right? Yeah, if I Google definitely. that person, that good person no longer works at AHS. Mm -hmm. what does that tell me <laughs> you're yeah. full of it right yeah. so yeah. Uh, unless unless i can confirm a lot of these things it's just mm. it's just hearsay right yes um i'm a great salesperson mm -hmm. i can sell fridge to an eskimo right yes uh, but that's not the point it's like i want to make sure that i was that gurjeet's gonna pick up my phone when i need more money next time <laughs> <laughs> right it's like yeah. sure i can get financing and that's the last deal that's who's getting because this yeah. deal is so sick it's shaking flaky right yes. no because commercial financing is this every year they would pour a common check they would have an annual review right this is very yeah. different than residential mortgages you get five year term nobody sees you for another five years right okay yes yeah, commercial definitely. doesn't work that way commercial is callable the loan can be called yes right so it depends on the situation. After two years of underperforming, they'll call that loan. Bye-bye, right? <laughs> that you can go yeah. for receivership, foreclosure, and bankruptcy. So that's not good. Right? doesn't yeah. matter if it's Slave Lake or not. Right? Yes. Um, the other issue that we that I mentioned is that mm -hmm. does the municipality allow this for that zoning, right? If it's single house mm -hmm. rezoning, make sure that the city hall will issue the business permit okay to operate that kind of business in that environment okay. you know nimby right not in my backyard if the neighbors find out they would terminate that business overnight yes, gone definitely. ahs or no ahs <laughs> right because <laughs> hs really isn't concerned with zoning they just said yeah. you get the business license you can operate yeah. we'll give it to you well yes. they can finance this thing now they can't operate the business what good is it yes right so don't waste your time unless you can confirm a the city hall allows it with that under that zoning or b okay. they can get an exemption and still get the business permit to run the business right okay. yeah. don't get in trouble by by working in some out of, out of you know out of the garage mentality that this is going to fly you know this is not hey man this is not vietnam this is not india we we can't do that in canada <laughs> yeah well, we just I... we just do it right so back in Vietnam, I can do whatever I want. I business license, <laughs> be damned. Yes. All right. Yeah, it's not like that in Canada, right? You can get a big heap, a lot of trouble for doing that. It's yeah. like for doing something that the society needs, the community needs. Yeah. You still get in trouble, right? What the heck? <laughs> so don't waste your time unless you for sure know that they have done the research. Okay. 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 Just so ask them the that. questions and then, and then we show me see. proof. Show me proof. Show me like you know, have you contact City Hard? You got an email from them. Did they email you saying that we yes, that's not a problem. We'll issue the business permit. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes, you can operate that kind of business in this area. Okay. Right? With okay. whatever restrictions they have, right? Okay. And uh sounds good. Yeah, and 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 probably so so they were telling me that uh um so currently that that place they have tenant over there like um uh, yeah. just the people who's living over there um yeah and 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 that numbers the the number she just asked it asked it from the realtor yeah and Nettle gave a really good numbers i think it was around nine thousand ten thousand a month just from the rental that's crazy number that's crazy yeah, yeah. <laughs> for a for a 500 yeah. property so like yes so Gurji, you can do it you can do it two ways you can do it the right way and you can do it her way <laughs> so the right way i is know like... what she's thinking uh -huh. you know what i know what she's thinking 
Why don't you just do this as a rental as my primary residence? Why don't you do it as a rental property, just a regular rental property? You can, up to yeah. you, right? Uh, but yeah. if she comes back, she says, hey, I want to expand my business. Can I leverage? She says, leverage what? Yeah, I don't have the, the zoning over there. That can be issued. I got nothing. I got nothing yeah. to work with, right? Uh -huh. You do it your way. If you do it my way, we can help you grow. We we grow together. See, I help my investors grow their business and and, and really grow that business mm -hmm. rather than just doing the shady way. Like, yeah, they can get away with just lying to the lenders. Say, hey, I'm just a rental, just a regular rental. It's going to be 9000 Here's the income, da, 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 boom, bang, bang, boom. You get a mobile mortgage special to do it and I'm done. I'm bye-bye, right? Mm -hmm. But it's like, how are we going to grow to 30, 40, 50 units down the road? Yes. Right? Yes, definitely. For me, Gurjeet, it's not about this. It's not about this deal. For me, it's mm -hmm. like, I want to do the next 5, 10 deals for you. Yeah, definitely. I helped the guy who did the Subway franchise, okay? He okay. had three fr franchise, three Subway franchise, I tell you. Mm -hmm. Right? And the three franchise that he owned was leased. The fourth, the fourth franchise that he's buying, the Subway, I, I, I suggested, I say, what the hell are you leasing? You know how much money you leave on the table? I, and I, and I, I educated him. I taught him. I said, I, I can help you buy and lease the property. Next one. Okay. Have a separate company, buy that asset, right? Have your three operating business fund the down payment. You put nothing out. I can finance the purchase. I can finance the down payment even. We did it. He bought the fourth one with almost zero of his money. Okay. Right? Almost 100% financing. Mm -hmm. Closing costs and tax and all that stuff. He had to chip in his own money. But it's like, yeah. I finance it with using you know, the down payment from, from the three other operating business, right? Using the business mm -hmm. line of credit and, and, and using that money for down payment and using a different company to purchase it, mm -hmm. right? And he didn't even have to draw that money. It's like, company shareholder loan type so it's it's a loan to a you know a subsidiary company or a related company it's not taxable it's not an income all that money he drew out of the operating business he used for the down payment without paying income tax right and the financing because the down payment's being financed by the other operating business the 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 the, the mortgage itself is financed mm -hmm. by the new fourth subway leasing it Ooh. Isn't that crazy? Now he's growing. Now his business is growing, and his appreciation of the property is growing. Both, mm -hmm. right? He's paying the lease, but it's to himself, right? That is so cool. Now he guess how many property he has? He has seven. So count that. Mm -hmm. He has three, right? That was that own nothing. His fourth one, his fifth, and his sixth and seventh one. Now they own properties. Okay. Right. So it really depends on your, your client's mindset. If this is it, that's all that they're doing. That's they're gonna retire with this business, then okay, they're fine, whatever. Okay. Right? But if they rent really want if they want to be serious, they want to grow their business and maybe one day leave it to their children or their grandchildren, create a real legacy. Mm -hmm. Man, you can make a ton of more money by helping them grow their business and make them rich. Yeah. Right. Mr. Singh, I can do it your way. But if you want, I can have a better plan for you. Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. Yeah. So why am I telling you this? Because I want to help you operate the next set of business. I want to operate the next 30, 40 units, right? 50 units. We want to scale up. If you got if you got the process system in place and you keep hiring people, why not? Create employment, right? Yes. Hell, I know a lot of nurses from India, a lot of nurses from the Philippines, right? They're good people. They're really good about taking care of the old elderly, right? Canadians don't have the mentality, right? People from <laughs> India, people from Philippines, people from Vietnam, China, they they love taking care of the elderly. They have that heart yeah. centric, yes. right? We'll import them. Hell, immigration is, you know, come to Canada, right? We'll <laughs> now create a plan, business plan, yeah. immigration. Hell, you get your immigrate, you, you get your immigration consultant friend. Right? Yes. Work together, make money. Yes. Yeah. Easy money, man. I, I help other immigration consultants do the same thing. They bring immigrants to Canada. I help them finance residential property with commercial mixed use. Mm. Right? 
<laughs> I have to finance buy this property with 25% down instead of 35. Okay. Think about that. The difference between 25 and 35% is 10%. On two million dollar property, that's 200,000 I say yeah. this immigrant. Yeah. That's a big deal. Yeah, definitely. Right. Okay. So, you know what? Just think bigger, right? When you have in, in we have when you, when you have entrepreneurs, they are thinking long term. They're thinking with a bigger yeah. vision, right? Help yeah, them grow, definitely. right? I help a lot of rich people get good smelling richer, right? <laughs> so I can make 50, 60, 80,000 dollar commission, right? Yes. Yeah. On a deal. I don't want to chase realtors all the time, man. It sucks after <laughs> third, fourth, fifth year. Right? I don't know. That really sucks. Like it's been two years. It's like <laughs> it sucks getting you understand, crazy. right? It's like yeah, I am only yeah. as good as my last deal. He they treat me like a dog. <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> I help you get your commission. You gotta treat me better yeah. than that. Yes. Right? Gurjeet, when is the deal is getting done? Where are you getting approval? It's like <laughs> let me do my work, will you? Yes. Yeah. All right. So that's it, my friend. Uh, I, I love, you know, honestly, but I do love realtors. I have lots of realtor friends still, but most of my referrals come from investors, my okay. networks, right? Accountants, you know, and some lawyers. Actually, way more accountants than okay. the realtors who send me referral, right? Because so, the accountant has the, the content holders have the person who do businesses. Exactly. I don't need to chase my clients. I just yes. need to get permission from them. Email to my accountant, to their accountant, and give me access to that. I request directly from the accountant, whatever I need. Yes. Right. Definitely. I, I love commercial finance in that way. It's expected, right? They don't do their own bookkeeping. They don't use H and R Block. They use accountants most often. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yes. If not, I help fix the problem. <laughs> and then using HR block, I fix the problem first. <laughs> We're redoing your taxes with a real accountant. Jeez. Yeah. Uh, you can't grow your business with HR. Sorry, Liberty Taxes, yeah. HR block, yeah. they're insufficient. Right. Bookkeepers are not enough. Yeah. So hopefully I'm helping you enough, Gurjeet. Um yeah. and you know, get you on the right path. At least now yeah. you have a better understanding, right? Yeah. Yeah. Whether okay, how do I proceed with this? There's mm -hmm. two paths. We know that. There's a third path, private lending, right? That's a third path. Yeah. Can be easily done with private lending. Mm -hmm. Walk in a park, right? But if they want to do this the right way, and at the end of the day, if they get construction financing, wow, they're like, they're, they're financing based on as of complete, mm -hmm. which is going to be higher loan to value than 75% than LTV. Yes. Okay. Right. So it can, keep it can that in mind. Higher? It can be because there's once it's complete, it has a value much higher than the purchase price, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Um, it's basically a construction financing, right? Involved. It, whatever the two, three hundred thousand you mentioned that's required, mm -hmm. that's pretty much the down payment, right? Yes. Right. So yeah. if they do the res if they do the can if they do all the uh renovation, they don't have down payment. If they have the down payment, they have no money for renovation. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. So they need a business plan. They really do. They really need to have it on paper. Like okay. get whatever in the head in paper. Right. Okay. That's important for, for, for commercial financing. Okay. And, and 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 finance on the business, you know, I, I really hope they have accountants who did the financials. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Other than the $30, $50 HR block tax tax <laughs> services. <laughs> <laughs> we need more, right? They need those financial yeah. statements, right? Even on the uh, business for self, there is a financial statement section. They need that, like in itself, in detail, right? Okay. Um, there's more to it. There's there's more to this, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. As far as the contract, the contractors and how they're paying, you know, you have to fish out all that information, right? Mm -hmm. Are they arms length, non arms length? How are the contractors? Are they related or non-related? That kind of thing, right? Because mm -hmm. if they're related, the contract could have been just a way of 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 uh, diverting money, income, rather than real, you know, real expense, right? So that's a problem there. 
So you need to really have a heart to heart talk with them and say, hey, okay. let's clear clarify a lot of these expenses. Okay. Are these really lit are these really legitimate expenses? Or are they just you guys fudging the numbers? Okay. Right. I know, because I help a lot of transport truck drivers, right? <laughs> I, I help the farmers, blueberry farmers. And, 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 and a lot of our brown brothers and mushroom farmers. I got a lot of Vietnamese mushroom farmers. They, they yeah, freaking right. hide the money one way or another, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, you got a Mercedes Benz on a mushroom farm? What, what do you need this for? Like, the heck? <laughs> this is not an operating business. You can't write this yeah. off on the operating business. Yeah. Right? So, is, is it legitimate? Right? What if it's not legitimate? They ask me. Why are you going to pay CRA taxes? Like, do you want the loan? Pay the taxes. Yes. That's the way I put it. Right? I, I want the loan. Pay the taxes. Definitely. That's how this, this system, system works, works in Canada. We don't have this back in India. We don't have this back in <laughs> Vietnam, right? Where do you yes. get 75% financing in India? You don't no, even get no. that. You don't get 50% no. back in, in, in my country. Yeah. I know definitely probably not back there either. Right? Same thing with China. It's like 50% yeah. loan to value, maybe. <laughs> right? Yeah. right? We don't we don't have that kind of financial system we have in Canada. So yeah. that's how it works. Yeah. Right? And 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 so I know uh uh you are running out of time, you might have another meeting. But so uh yeah. I was just thinking like uh so for your course that, that you're gonna start, uh so with with that course, like once once we are done with the course and uh, we go to the practical market so uh, do you guys do you, do you even help with that after the course too like with the scenario of course we have i have of course i love this business i mean you you're not even in, you're not even in the workshop yet you're not even a graduate and i'm helping you ready so when yeah. you're a graduate i'll even help you even more because i will i will give out the information that you really want I'll mm -hmm. give you the secret information that you're 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 waiting right now. It's like, which lender <laughs> so? I'm yeah. not gonna give you that because that's 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 the other twenty percent. That's not free, right? Yeah. <laughs> there yeah. is there is certain lenders that will do this deal more so than the other lenders, but most uh -huh. of them are able to do this. Mm -hmm. Like I, I mentioned, email, and I'm not I'm not lying. Most of them mm -hmm. can do this as long as you get what they need. Okay. Right? okay. A, supporting evidence. A lot, a lot of things that you need, like business plan is what I, I mentioned, right? But you know the templates I have, so then you just go through it, and hell, and 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 I advise a lot of the graduates say, hey, if you're gonna do the business plan for, to help them with the business plan, charge a fee. Yeah, right? a lot of my graduates charge fifteen hundred, twenty five hundred dollars to mm -hmm. do the business yep. plan. Yes, because it's time consuming, right? Yeah, take you two three and, hours to do the business and, plan. And I want to get paid. <laughs> So, so probably like so if I do this commercial uh, course and I'm ready to go with the commercial side, uh, yeah. So whatever deal I do, do I have to get my commission through my brokerage or I can get directly from the client? <laughs> because like I'm investing money on myself, I'm investing time on commercial. Yeah. Why I should give a, like some amount to my I, brokerage? You know what? Then. I'll <laughs> I'll make a video about this because I have been asked this question <laughs> so often. This question, I'll make a video about this. Yeah. I've been asked this question so often. Um, I think I'll end it here. I'll give you the answer off the record, okay? Otherwise, this would be bad if I put it on public domain. <laughs> <laughs> I'll end the recording first. So hopefully right. I answered your question for the financing, right? Is, okay. is it good? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'll go stop the recording and then I can answer these questions. Okay, Gurjeet. Yeah. So hope you do well with this. Uh, anybody have questions, just feel free, you know, comment in the, if I post this on YouTube, comment below. And I mm -hmm. create videos to answer a lot of these questions when people ask me. Uh, I love this business. It, it, if it helps you grow and helps build your reputation, it the whole industry improves, right? Mm -hmm. We're no longer called like car salesmen. I don't want to be equated, mm -hmm. you know, equated to a car salesman level. That, that sucks, mm -hmm. right? We're professional. Right. Yeah. Low love entry, but not in commercial financing, right? Yes. So did you get a lot of value out of the, our, our time just now? Yeah, I have. Right? Yeah, I have. See? So there's a lot to learn. And and, and that's why it's not free. And, and no nobody likes to teach because it's like there is a level of complexity that like I just can't just say yes or no. It's just not simple like that, right? 
It's yeah. like the difference between driving an a, a automatic transmission and a manual transmission. Very different. I just can't teach you. You have to know how to do it, right? And I, that's how that's how it is. We mentor you uh, for the six weeks uh, for the workshop, and then afterward, you you know you 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 give you're added to our private tribe, our own private group, okay. and all the graduates are in there. We help each other. We give leads. We give information. We're blunt. <laughs> we we tell you if this lender is no good, that lender is no good, of what lender is really good, and and why we go there anymore. Why they used to be good. Why this lender is taking over. Mm -hmm. Like we have updates in industry, right? Because we do all the deals uh, and we help each other because at the end of the day, it's like, hey, sometimes if my client needs help and it's in your part of town, Gurjeet, in Edmonton, I don't want to fly to Edmonton in December. Gurjeet, can you help this client? You know, we, we split, we do whatever. I'll help, you know, we work together, right? So yeah. it will save me the time and it will save me a pain because it's like, oh my God, there's like $600,000 less than a million dollar property. I really don't want to do this, but my investor, you know, it's like, yeah. I can't turn him away. So yeah. one of my graduates, like you can help, right? Yeah, well, that's fine. You know, send me whatever. We'll, we'll split whatever you feel like it, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's a win-win for everybody, right? Yeah. I don't need to fly into Edmonton. You're yeah. there already. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right? And, and, and I choose you. Like, you so yeah. Yeah, and, and do you even teach how to get more businesses for like clients? Yes, part of part of the workshop, part of the workshop, I help you right away. As a matter of fact, after the first week, you, you get content, you get contents you can use to repurpose and to be able to do so that you can start getting leads even before you graduate. All right. Okay. Uh it, it's 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 all about how to position yourself, basically. And I teach that at the beginning, right? To do that effectively, you need you need you need to know a lot of things, right? And to understand what you're able to do, and in the first in the first two weeks, really, you're you're off off mm -hmm. off at a good start, right? You can literally start getting leads, and and during the during the um during the six week long, you can bring those live leads, and we can work together as a as a case study even. Yes, and right. and I was just thinking, uh, uh, Sue. So uh, you you might be thinking like he's taking a lot of your time, <laughs> but uh, I'm just thinking like uh, as you said, like probably uh, so Canada and then then this US and then then UK and then Australia. These are the country where where people used to lend money. So once we get That's your right. course, we Commonwealth, can reach these so countries. Commonwealth, exactly. So. Once, once you take my workshop, you can use this in every Commonwealth country that uses mm -hmm. the Commonwealth system, banking system. Okay. And then probably this answers my questions too, that uh, if we deal over that countries, we don't need a brokerage. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have that system in place, the, the regulatory mm -hmm. system in place. Yeah. 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 Uh, I do deals in the United States. Uh -huh. In the past, in the past, I've done deals without the licensing. It's uh -huh. it's because it's consulting work. That's what I call it. And uh -huh. I have yes, you need to register U.S. based company, go company. through the U.S. bank, uh -huh. file taxes on that income there. Yeah, do everything legitimately on on the books, right? Mm -hmm. My CA yeah. handles cross border accounting, so I, I am perfect, mm -hmm. right? Uh -huh. uh, I'm taken care of. I don't want to get. IRS auditing me and chasing me and say, hey, we do <laughs> never want to see you stick your hand, your feet no. in our country. No. <laughs> I don't want that. Yeah. Right? No. Um, so, so you yeah. help with that so too. That's how legit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not that hard. It's not, it's, it's once you understand, Gurji, it's all about knowledge, right? The more you know, yeah. the more you make. Simple. Mm -hmm. Yes. I got right? you. And I got brokers who, who, who come to me and say, I've been doing this for 15 years. Where the hell were you 15 years ago? <laughs> 15 years ago, I, I I didn't care. I don't want to teach. Like I I I didn't have patience. 15 years ago, I was very impatient. Like I don't have time of the day. I just don't. I it, my mind is really much different now. When you're 52, you're you're much sorted, lower key, relaxed. Like my, my motivation is very different. Like right? my intrinsic motivation is now like I love seeing success. I love when my graduates become. The lead commercial financing desk, so like, geez, man, <laughs> right? I, I love it when my graduate takes over the real estate network as the mortgage broker for the whole entire city, right? That's yeah. huge, right? I love it when uh, and, you know, I love it when Jeremy uh, sends me and say, "Sue, I did five transport truck this week." I said, "What the heck?" 
<laughs> How much did you charge? Oh, I just charged 2500 2500 <laughs> Not bad. 2500 per per transport charge. Uh, you yeah. know, I can sure that's that that's that's not bad. Yeah. Right. If you can do the volume, that's great because now he does all of it, right? And I send him the business. I don't want to do this. You do it. Yeah. I don't care. Send me five hundred bucks. Send me a thousand. I don't really care. Like it's just like nothing, nothing to mm -hmm. you, nothing, and really not much to me, right? Yeah. So I make much more money, you know, on a sixty, eighty thousand dollar deal on, on my on my investors. I mm -hmm. this this is like five thousand. It's like spending money. <laughs> yes. Right. So. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, I, I love it to see the success. Like, mind-blowing, you know? The stuff that this can change your life because now you know how to help the people in, in your community. Yes. Because our community is like thriving entrepreneurs. Nobody's helping them. Yeah. Right? Be lending, private lending, what the heck? That's like the pit that you never crawl out of. Right? Yes. I, I I really I really struggle when I put somebody in private lending. Like, oh my god, they don't they should not. Oh. No go with it. Yeah. Right? Yeah, like 10, 15 years ago when I put people in private lending, I don't do any of If I if I cannot get you private if I cannot get you small business lending, at least a commercial lending, we need to work on this for now six months. Yes. Right? To get you there to get that money. I don't want you to go private lending. It's like double the interest rate and, and double the fees. It's just all that money can be used towards a business instead, right? To buy equipment to whatever, right? Yes. Or do the renovation for that matter. Like private lending is like, ah, oh, it's a big black hole, my friend, right? And I feel it. Like, like and I'm, I'm a heart-centered guy, right? So whenever I, I was like, ah, oh, yeah, I make some money, but I don't feel good about it when putting them into this high interest paint, like 16, 18%, it's like, oh, my yeah. Lord. I got you. That's horrible feeling. Like I wouldn't want to. If this was my brother, this is my uncle, I did not want them to take private. I was like, uncle, you need to like, let's work together. We need an accountant. We need to redo this taxes. We need to do go through this whole process and let's figure out what the money is so that we can show, right? Legitimate. Yes, we do have to pay C rate penalty and taxes. Yeah, we might as well do that. I'd rather get pay that penalty and taxes, which is only a few thousand, rather than lose. 30, 40, 50 grand on, on private money, right? Yeah. So what's worse? <laughs> I don't know. I'll pay the taxes, <laughs> right? Yeah. And, and deal with the audit, potential audit, but moving forward, pay the taxes, pay the tax man. They will never come knocking. <laughs> yeah? It's when you don't pay, they come knocking. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So that's it, man. Now, uh, I'll, I'll, off the records, and I, I'll answer your I'll answer your other question that you had. Okay, and I'll maybe at a later time I'll maybe do a video that I have to figure out a way to how to answer it better without ca <laughs> causing a fuss in the industry. Yes. All right. So I'll end this recording, and I'll be able to use this for other brokers that can learn from us. Right? Is that yes. good? Get your yeah, permission. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. All right. Cool.